Y'all ready to be history? Get started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. With Tex the VO stars. George Whittam, founder of Source Elements. Robert Marshall, international audio engineer. Darren Robbo Robertson. And Global Voice. Andrew Peters. Thanks to Tribu. Austrian Audio. Making passion heard. Source Elements. George the Tech Whittam. And Robbo and AP's international demos. To find out more about us, check the ProAudioSuite.com. Line up, man. And welcome. And don't forget, if you want to get a discount of $200 off your Tribooth, T-R-I-P-A-P-200 is the code you need. Now, this week, very topical, of course, this AI thing will just not go away. And um, I know that there was a conversation about that place. I don't even like saying it. Anyway, I will say it. Uh, Voices.com supposedly um, have promised not to farm out people's voices from their database. Tim Friedlander has been involved in this and has written an article, which is what I saw. And Tim is joining us. G'day, Tim. Hello, hello. I'm here. So what's the backstory to this? And how did you get involved? The backstory to the voices, uh, voices voices.ai, voices.com thing is, goes back to about May when... Uh, David Cicerelli and Voices.com announced that they had were releasing Voices.ai. And for the voice acting community, that was a huge concern. Basically, for the main part being that many people have been uploading audio to their website, through their website, for 20 years. So, theoretically, Voices.com or either, either of these sites has 20 years of very high-quality data and audio that they could use to synthesize our voices. Um, so uh, through Nava, which is an association um, that I run along with Karen Gilfrey and um, a board of directors, we reached out to David and Stephanie and had a week of conversations with them to get the assurance that they had never been uploading or using or doing anything um, with uh, auditions or files that have been uploaded through their website. And out of that came our Fair Voices campaign or the Fair Voices pledge that we launched. And we reached out to the other online casting sites, uh, six other sites, to get the same assurances from them and also to make sure that they had changed their terms of service. So Voices.com at the time changed their terms of service to very explicitly say they would not be using any audio files uploaded through their site for machine learning or um, synthesized uh, or synthesizing voices. Was that backdated or is that uh, from that point onward? The terms of service were from that point onward, but um, they publicly um, at the time and in various blog posts and other written areas have said that they have never um, used audio files for that. The caveat being is that once the audio files are uploaded and sent to a client, it's possible that the client then could take those audition files and use them. We don't know and haven't seen any companies in per per se who, who we know are doing that, but you know, over the last... 10 or so years, a lot of these companies have been working in the AI TTS sphere um, and very potentially could could have been using that audio for training. We haven't seen it yet um, explicitly that we know of, but you know the inability to track our audio files and to know where the audio goes once we've emailed it out or uploaded through a website um, you know, makes that a real possibility. So to give this some perspective, mm-hmm. is there any sort of copyright law or anything in place at the moment that protects someone from having their voice turned into an AI voice without their permission? That, that's a great question. Uh, short answer is no. We've been working with the, the Copyright Office. Um, I uh, gave a presentation to the FTC last week at a roundtable. I've spoken with um, multiple lawyers and people across across the country and across, across the world. We're working with um, a group in, in Europe to help with the EU AI Act. Most actors, voice actors, we give away our files as a, as a work for hire. And the, in, the understanding is that that audio will be used for this very specific project. Unfortunately, that also basically gives the person we've given the audio file to the copyright and the ability to do whatever they want to with that. We're currently yeah. looking at the possibility that since most voice actors record from home, if in from like a music perspective, we could theoretically be the owners of the master files Um, but, um, because a lot of times there's no contracts that are signed, but that's an early, we're in the early stages of, of exploring that, but there are copyright law does not currently protect the voice actor. Um, it protects the copyright holder, which 99% of the time is the company who hired us. Wow. 
And and there's no the only other thing we could fall back on is right right of publicity. Um, but those laws are only um, really in California and New York where the strongest laws. And then there's possibly biometric um, biometric and bi- um, privacy laws. But those really are only strongest in um, Illinois and Texas of all places. Privacy rights. Huh. So is there a way of like you know we've talked about this before having some kind of like fingerprint of your voice. You know, if anybody uses your voice, it's quite obvious it's yours because it shows some kind of a fingerprint in in the waveform. Potentially. Um, I don't know how that would work, but there must be someone who's got something. Uh, nobody does currently um, that, that we know of. Um, we've spoken, I've spoken with people at DARPA and at NASA. Um, we are currently working. We've, got, we've gotten very deep in this conversation to try and figure wow. out a way to do this. What we can do, um, and actually I have a, I'm working on this with, a, with a co- another company that I started about three years ago to create voice prints that we can then use to match a human voice to a synthetic voice and also to match a human voice to a human voice to say that they're the same person. You could theoretically, um, if we can get that software in place, lock down a voice. So if somebody tries to upload it to a synthetic voice site, um, it would be locked and would be flagged as uh, basically essentially DRM for for voice um, is what we're trying to do. Um, but, you know, the, the only thing really that you could do that might stay is some kind of spread spectrum um, watermarking that you could do within that. But it'd have to be embedded so so deeply in there that you couldn't, you know, like you could rip, rip this into, into Pro Tools or rip it into something else. Right. And, you know transfer it between audio files or different DAWs and strip out. If it's frequency, then it's very easy to rip, to pull out frequencies. Um, most of the stuff that's out there, watermarking is pretty easy to bypass currently. Well, you just have to get clarity or something and it's gone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So what's the compromise future from your perspective then? Like what, where would it be a point where, um, you know, Darren Robertson is selling his voice sample disc to AI people, or what? Or do, would, you, would you rather not see AI at all? You know, we're. we're I, I'm, I'm a musician primarily. You know, I came from. I was in Seattle in the '90s and was on the cusp of you know like playing live and and doing and and really really exploring music when Napster and everything hit. And from a you know from a consumer perspective, that was one of the most eye opening things that I'd ever seen. The ability to to now have access to a massive amount of of audio that I'd never had heard before. Um, not anti technology by any means, and definitely not anti AI. Um, I've worked with a synthetic voice company. I have um, know people who are working with synthetic voice companies. The issue right now is that a lot of the foundational models, a lot of the foundation of these AI generative um, engines, synthetic voice engines, are built on somebody's data, and more than likely, they're built. They are being built on the literal voices of voice actors. That so we become the foundation of of a lot of these models. What Nava has been asking for is consent, control, and compensation, and it's the same thing that all artists are asking for, musicians are asking for, models are asking for. Is if you're going to take my data and what makes the essence of me, my voice or my image or the way I walk or the way that I speak, the cadence that I have, the way that I stand. All of those things are very personal to all of us individually. And that data is basically being turned into data, right? That what makes us is being turned into data and put into these synthetic voice engines or these synthetic generative engines or generative AI to produce images and videos and photos and voices that are based on real humans and sound like and look like real humans. Um, so we're trying to find consent, control and compensation for those and really consent to say yes or no, you can make a synthesized version of my voice. Mm. So if, we, if we're talking about AI voices, we're not going to stop it. It's already out. I mean, mm-hmm. the thing's going to yeah, happen. They're, they're out there. Yes, correct. How do you perceive we control yeah. it? The only thing that we can currently do right now, and this is part of what this discussion at the FTC came up with last week, is is really, I think, from a consumer perspective, a consumer safety perspective, I think that there is so much danger in disinformation and, and, and false information and just absolute lies that are out there that um, can now be easily replicated and put into a video or an audio or something that is not very easily detectable. It's almost impossible to, to, to tell a synthetic voice from a human voice that, that are done well. It's hard to tell an, a synthetic image from a, from a, you know, a factual image. Um, the laws and regulations currently are, are laws and legislation, I think, is, is currently the only thing that we can really do on a broad scale to, um, to help stem the tide of the damage that's been done already. And going forward, we have to have very clear contracts and agreements in place 
that either do or do not allow for the use of somebody's voice to be used as, as in, in a synthetic voice or in a generative AI. That's partially what you know what the WGA and SAG after strikes are about. AI is the top of that list of things that are concerns, um, and it's a top concern for anybody who is in um, you know in in the arts right now that creates anything that any of that could be put into synthetic engine of some kind and have a new creation made out of that. We just came out of a pandemic where we relied on artists, on musicians and filmmakers and actors and voice artists. And the first thing we do out of that pandemic is try and replace those people. That's really essentially what's happening. (laughs) There is some accessibility. You know, um, there are places that, you know, there is an argument to be made for, you know, doing things that a human couldn't generate. But when it's done to replace somebody, when it's done just to save money that's where the concern comes in and we know that money that those savings are not going to be passed along to the consumer a video game is not going to be cheaper for somebody to buy because it has synthetic voices a movie is not going to be cheaper at the movie theater because it's has it's synthetic synthetically generated so they cut out the people they cut out the people who actually make this work and then that money just goes to the the company that that gets to save that money at the expense of of everybody why would voices.com say the quiet part out loud they're a bit like uber basically going like, hi, please work for us, make us money, and then we're going to put all of our money into figuring out how to make driverless cars, so we don't need you. See ya, bitches. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) They did, I don't know if anybody saw the news last week, but David Cicerelli is out. Um, And um, uh, Morgan Stanley, I believe, uh, is it Morgan Stanley? Who was the the venture capital, whoever gave them the money? um, They replaced him at the top. Um, you know, my my guess is that you know they they either went all in on AI and it's not paying off, or they weren't seeing. You know, it's just this is all purely speculation. This is just you know what what we can what we can have you know for conjecture in this place. So I don't I know nothing for fact. Um, but you know they they invested a massive amount of money in them. What eighteen million, fifteen to eight, eighteen million dollars seven years ago. And if they went all in on AI, you know, I don't know if anybody's heard. They lost all of it. Yeah, they lost all of it. I don't. <laughs> I, has anybody actually have you guys heard their AI? The voices AI. Their samples, they're no, terrible. I've never heard it. They're terrible. They are, they are, they are terrible. But they were done with consent control and compensation. Is it is it better or worse than voice alo? I haven't heard that one, but most of what I deal with, I, I deal with Eleven Labs and Play.ht are the two that I use most often um, for examples, um, for samples in that. Um, and both of those are phenomenal. Um, they are they are really, really good. And voices.ai is nowhere it, it's it sounds about i mean it sounds about 10 years old the technology from what i heard and and the you know some of the voice actors who had their voices synthesized who participated in this are not happy with with how that voice sounds yeah i was gonna say just to lighten up of it there's an old gag that could actually be modernized yeah. <laughs> and you can ask the question how many voiceover artists does it take to change a light bulb and the answer is none you get an right. ai to do it <laughs> right, oh, yeah, that, that exactly. was the drummer joke. I know, but we can ch- update. <laughs> yeah, update. we can we can update it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it just hasn't happened quite yet. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've heard that one before somewhere. <laughs> so the thing that occurs to me, though, Tim, is um, you know, it's great that we're protecting voice actors um, and all that sort of stuff. But I mean, obviously, there's a crapload more voice samples out there. I mean, how many podcasts are there out there and and YouTube content creators and all the rest of it, all these places they could go mining for voices. How do we protect them? You know, currently we can't. Currently there is no protection for that. Um, you know, that I mean, you know, this goes into where, you know, we talk about this being more, it's it's with anybody who has recorded audio is is at risk. And that, you know, voice actors just happen to be the ones who make a living off of our recorded voice most of the time, but doesn't mean that others aren't making a living off of, you know, what they have on the, the podcast and YouTube. And even those who are just, um, you know, hobbyists at this, who just have a little bit of recorded audio, some Twitch stream, you know, I'm, I can currently record all the audio off this and make a synthetic voice of anybody on this, on this conversation right now, as can anybody who's listening to it. Right. Um, and it's easy. What, what work does it really kill? Like truly kill? Like in the short what, term, I can see it taking out a crap load of e-learning and other things like that. It'll take, it takes that out. That's, you know, any of the stuff that is purely factual. I, you know, a lot of times talk about factual stuff where I just need information read. A lot of that t- stuff gets taken, taken out right away. Um, which if you can be the, if you can license your voice to that, 
then then you can still have a career as a voice actor. One of the things that I think is the the dangerous part of this, and this goes for any of the any of the arts, is that a lot of these places that are gonna that it's gonna be replaced first are where a lot of voice actors, a lot of artists learn. This is how you cut your teeth and you come up through the industry. You know, you you do the free jobs, you do the cheap jobs, you do the entry level jobs. Those entry level jobs go away right away because. Also, it's cheaper, but a lot of the times it's better. Unfortunately, it is better. The audio quality of a voice actor who's just starting out, who is using a USB mic in their in their living room with hardwood floors and the refrigerator running and the AC is going to be at risk for sure. And, and, and I think, you know, rightfully so. Well, I'll, I think- I'll give you another one. Is the company that doesn't hire anybody. Right. And they just see the AI voices as... It's better than having Mary Jo read it because it's going to take her a long time and Mm -hmm. uh, whatever. And so like, just, yeah, just type it into the system and there's our video. It's our instruction video on how to use our garden hose. Absolutely. Or something. And, and yeah, it's going to take out, like, I I don't see it initially taking out like real voice acting, but I agree. Just like conveying a voice. It's just going to like. Plenty of AI voices I'd rather hear instead of the president of the auto workers union. You know, for example. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 I mean, and, and there are, you know, one of the things that we've seen, I think, has been most hopeful in this is that those who work with voice actors already or don't want to replace voice actors. Those who those people who are already working in the creative sphere, who are the producers, who are the directors, they're the people they say, I would never replace a voice actor. But it's all of those people who don't, who have just need a voice actor for this one time, need a voice actor for this one training video, this one thing here that they would go to a friend or a referral or wherever it might be to, you know, the online casting site and cast somebody who's new. They're not going to do that anymore. And we're not, we're not going to see, it's very hard to tangibly find the damage to this because we're not seeing auditions going out where, the, where they're saying we're going to audition a human versus an AI and the AI gets the job. They're just not even going to bother to do the auditions in the first place. And we're never even going to know if it was a synthetic voice. So this is partially why, you know, again, laws and legislation um, where there's a Senate bill out that um, Nav is endorsing Senate Bill 2691, which is a labeling act of 2023, which is going to require all anything AI generated to be labeled. Mark, same thing as you would with food. Um, I think, you know, consumers have a right to know if what they're taking in is synthetic or human, whether it's emotional, spiritual, you know, um, food. We have a right to know what we're interacting with. I I think I'm I'm, I'm mm. you know. I mean I I want to know when I'm in the matrix personally. Like, right, <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, you want to know you're in the matrix. I'm sure it puts to bed a lot of political issues too. I mean, you know, imagine well, sitting there listening to a radio broadcast of you know Joe Biden declaring war on Russia when it's actually not really Joe Biden. You know, absolutely. If you, if you, yeah. you know, yeah. there's all sorts of issues that this raises. Well, and, and you know that as well, but also it, it raises the it raises the possibility of doubt. And you know, if you know the the Donald Trump tape from years ago, if he could say, "Well, I I never said that. That's a synthetic voice," and, and prove that it's not my synthetic voice, prove I actually said that, right? So it, you, yeah. you, you're running into, into both sides of that, and we're coming into election, you know. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. There's all yeah. sorts of possibilities raised, considering yeah. some yeah. of the possible candidates, right? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Is there a way of a voice actor to say, okay, I'm going to actually upload to, say, some place where you can license a voice from, you actually give them all the information of your voice and then there's a license fee if people want to grab it and use it for something, then they pay you a license fee, the same as you would do with library music. Absolutely. And that's been, I've, I've, been, I've been pushing that, that example for a while. I think that, you know, it's not, so it's kind of, you know, what, what, one of the ways that, that both Europe and the, with the GDPR and with FTC are approaching this is that we don't need to make new laws or new regulations. We just need to enforce the ones that exist and put this into, use the precedent. I think the precedent of music license Licensing can directly, um, you know, go into into voice. You have a you have a licensing fee, you have a usage fee, you have a generation fee. You know, if you generate new content from this, then I get paid a certain amount for the generation. There's there's a, there's companies out there that do that. Um, Vocal ID Veritone was one of the earlier ones that did that, and there's a licensing fee that they have in place for that. Um, and the actors who do that have the consent to know where their voice goes. We're working with a TTS company who reached out to us and we're helping them with this exact same thing of, of helping to license their deployments um, so that the voice actor knows where their voice is being used, but also get paid for the original creation of that, of that model and then know where the voice goes um, from there. 
there's lots, there's lots of possibilities. The one possibility that, unfortunately, none of those things really exist right now. The only possibility that's happening is people are just can upload your voice anywhere they want to create a synthetic voice and use it. Um, and that's there's nothing really stopping anybody. You know, even the, the the AI sites right now, all you have to do is click a button that says, yes, I have the right to upload this voice. And, and at one point, do you stop anybody? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at what, at what point do you stop anybody? If you blend two people's voices yep. or three people's, at a certain point, you're like, it's nobody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and and it becomes, you know, I mean, that's what Siri, Alexa, Google Voice, those are, you know, they're all blended voices, multiple people put in together and to create a new voice. So now you have to get into, you know, now, now you're talking about, you know, songwriting splits, right? Now you're going to talk about splits and points on, on a, on a, oh, on a yeah, song, please. right? So I've got three voices. We all get <laughs> an equal split of, of the usage of that voice. Or does it not become an issue because it doesn't sound like anybody, therefore there's no conflict, right? Voice actors, you're also going to run into conflict, right? What if my, my if, you know, my human voice is doing Pepsi, my synthetic voice can't do Coca-Cola. And if it does, who's going to be held responsible for that? And, you know, or, or a voice that just sounds like me, you know, at what point, how how do you draw the line there? How how do you even know this voice sounds a lot like me? Like, is it my voice or is it not my voice? It's a voice that sounds a lot like me. Do I become, you know, do I get into conflict because of the similarity? You You know, know, it's just like, like this, like actors are impersonated. It has to be like all voices are synthesized. Right. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. Yeah. Yeah. From a synthetic voice saying that all voices are synthesized, including this voice. Yeah. Right. But can you see, um, like, if you look into the future of the uh, the role of the agent, mm. will the agent yeah. all of a sudden become a library of voices that can potentially be used for AI? Would that be the shift? I have honestly have no idea. I think there's going to be a... We're we're already starting to see a split of of you know human only no AI and then those who are willing to have a conversation with it and explore it. I'm not by any means advocating to replace humans with AI voices, but we also know that this technology has been around for years, right? And it's been it's been being built for the last twenty years, ten years solidly for synthetic voices. Um, it's here and we can just pretend that it's not going to have an impact and hope that it doesn't have an impact, or we can go directly to these companies, which is what, what we've been doing. I've been speaking with the CEOs of these companies to try and talk with them about, great, this is why voice actors are concerned. This is why artists in general are concerned, but this is what we're concerned about. And we know you have a lot of money. 11 labs just, you know, they're worth a hundred million dollars or they got, they got an investment of a hundred million dollars a month ago or so. Right. Um, they have the money to pay the voice actors fairly for the foundation and if they can license that the better better audio they have the better foundational model they can create so if those voice actors who want to do that have the right to say yes it's the, it's the right to say yes as much as it is the right to say no you should have the right to say yes if you want to um i think i reckon there's going to be a scramble with voice actors all trying to get themselves uploaded onto one of these business sites so, so they can be licensed out yeah some of them have you know right now there's really no clear understanding of what that licensing fee would be um, you know, we've seen sim- similar jobs on the casting sites that, you know, one on once one job is, is paying $500 on the next job. It's paying $20,000 and they don't appear to be any different. We just don't have enough. You know, a lot of people who are casting don't have enough information to know about where those files are going to be used. Voice actors don't know really enough about how they're going to be used either to know what to ask. And agents don't know what to ask either. Like just so much, so many unknowns out there about what to even ask to come up with what a fair, a fair usage would be. Cause there's so many, potentially so many uses out there that we can't even comprehend right now that we can't even imagine of that, that it could be, that they could be used for. Um, so it's, it's really hard to tell. Mm-hmm. And that generation is kind of what we're looking at. a kind of a generation fee is what we're kind of really interested in. Mm-hmm. Well, it's going to be interesting to watch how this all unfolds. But um, it's a massive can of worms, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it is. A it's massive, incredible. Yeah. It is. It is a massive can of worms. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, visual artists are being hit massively. Obviously, right now, they're you know they're some of the the most hard hit because those those images are so distinctive and the styles are so distinct that when they come out, there's obvious it was trained on those. And and you know, authors, there's two. Two lawsuits against, you know, multiple lawsuits against AI companies right now from authors who have had their their books ingested into these and used as foundational models for to train these things. And the, the thing is, you know, once it's trained, you can't untrain it. Mm, exactly. Well, AP, was it you saying that there's a, a film in the can with James, starring James Dean? Yeah, that's so. That's what I'm told is sitting there waiting to go. So James Dean is going to be a co-star of a new, new movie. Wow. That's insane. So they've just, you know, you've used most motion capture, so they've got an actor that actually can walk mm-hmm. and move like James Dean. 
Um, they've just done yeah. motion capture and then they just built James Dean over the top of his skeleton, so to speak. And, that, and if that thing becomes a hit, you can see they're going to drag them all out. Right. And then Elvis really isn't dead. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> We're talking about that for VO, like speech to speech too. Well, that's the thing. How would you license that, Tim? It's performed by, you know, it's James, the, you know, the James Dean performed by so-and-so. You would want to give the motion capture person the credit for it. Like speech to speech, I could I could narrate, you know, um, Karen Guilfrey, our vice president, uses this example a lot, which is I could, she could narrate Audacity of Hope and then put Barack Obama's voice over it. So it would be the voice of Barack Obama performed by Karen Guilfrey. Right. Mm. So as read by Barack Obama, performed by Karen Guilfrey. Yeah, it's puppetry. Yeah. Huh. yeah. If I was um, the ad, ad agency for 7-Eleven, I would actually get an AI of Elvis and have him in a 7-Eleven. <laughs> and finally, it's right. true. Slurpee in one hand, donut in the other. Is that what you're saying? When does Elvis become public domain? Yep. Yeah, a long yes. time. A oh, long no. time. It's a, it's a space to watch, isn't it? It really is. And the space will be filled by AI. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's interesting. And I think we've got... Mm. I think we've got three months left. I think we have about three months before something dramatically. So you, you think there's a there is a time frame on this? Because I was actually sitting here thinking, God, how long how long will this take to sort? Mm. But you're saying you think there might be a time frame on it. I think we've got. I think we have. If anything, in, any any legitimate and strong protections need to be in place before the end of the year. By by the end of the year, it's going to be too late for us to to have any kind of protection. The technology is moving too quickly. Um, it's exponential and. You know, it's going to be beyond our control, or potentially beyond the control of those who actually, who actually are running the systems. You know, at some one point, you know, without fully taking your entire system offline and destroying your models, it could potentially get at, get to the point where there is no control, there is no ability to consent, there is no ability to even know whose voice is being used. They're just a you know a multitude of generic voices that that one company gets paid when you use their voice, but nobody has any idea who the human behind it is or where the content came from anymore. Watch this yep. space, people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Indeed. Yep. Indeed. Exactly. Oh, it's, by the way, this is actually really not me. I'm on holiday. This is an AI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not hard to do. Well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite. With thanks to Tribe And Austrian Audio. Recorded using Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters. And mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging. With tech support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say good day, drop us a note at our website. Theproaudiosuite.com.